very proud to be an honorary fellow of the Society. And um, that stems from the fact that uh, back in the mid-50s, um, I was at Beecham's and uh, together with some colleagues from uh, the J Lions T Division, uh, we got together and felt that there was a need for us to have an organisation that represented the marketing discipline, uh, which was then of course in its infancy. And um, the Institute of Marketing, uh, which was the only organisation uh, to which uh, we could belong then, uh, mostly represented the sales function. And the sales function was then all powerful uh, in virtually every organisation uh, that sold direct to the retail trade. Um, you had sales forces of hundreds. And marketing uh, was the new kid on the block. Um, and we were regarded uh, at best as a nuisance um, by many, therefore, of our colleagues in sales at the time. So um, we felt that we really needed an organization that was going to represent our interests. And um, in order to do that, uh, we had to um, we had to be quite secretive about what we were trying to do, uh, because clearly salespeople were not going to be best pleased about um, a competitive organisation <laughs> springing up. And um, so we held the occasional meeting in places like advertising agencies, so that uh, people in the company wouldn't know. Um, and. Um, Andrew Marsden tells a, a, a story uh, that um, he suggests that what really happened was that the marketing director said, you, you and you, you come in this meeting and we're going to form the marketing society. But of course that's apocryphal because the marketing director really needed to keep out of the line of fire because he needed the support of the sales director who was then all powerful. And uh, so he, he kept on the side and, and we in fact created the momentum and eventually when we had sufficient members we were able to declare that we were forming a marketing society um, and the deed was done.